Good morning. We are on page 42 of the Mystery of History. And let's see here. Uh, we have just finished the French and Indian War, which was, I forgot the years, 1754 to 1763. And during the, during the, towards the end of the French and Indian War, we're going to be looking at Catherine the Great in 1762. She was Empress of Russia. I like these stories. Me too. I like to see how we can kind of see that Catherine the Great, this was going on towards the end of the French and Indian War, but it was going on. So we have something happening in Europe and North America, but other things are happening in Russia at the same time. All right, so one of the greatest rulers of Russia wasn't a man, it was a woman. And she wasn't a Russian, she was German. How could this be? Well, a German-born princess, Sophia Augusta Frederica, made herself one of Russia's strongest leaders through marriage, a palace coup, and a sharp mind. By marrying into the royal family of Russia, Sophia adopted Russian culture. She joined the Russian Orthodox Church, and she changed her name to, okay, one moment here, Yekaterina Alexievna, Alex, Alex, Alexievna, Yekaterina Alexievna. Okay, we remember her as Catherine the Great. I can. Can you kind of hear Catherine in Yekaterina? Yeah. Catherine. When Catherine was a young girl in Germany, Russia was under the rule of Elizaveta Petrovna. She was the daughter of Peter the Great. Yes. I think her, if you called her in English, her name would be Eliza. Probably Elizabeth or something. Eliz or Elizabetta. Elizabetta. I don't know. Okay, so Elizabetta Veta, was the daughter of Peter the Great. Remember that Peter the Great from Volume 3. He was the rugged king that was seven. I did not remember he was seven feet tall. He loved shipbuilding. That's hard to miss him in a crowd. I did not know it was going to be taller. He expanded Russia's borders. I remember that. He erected St. Petersburg out of the swamp. I remember that. Though rough in manner, he was strong and capable. And in the years between the reigns of Peter the Great and Elizaveta, Russia had seven different leaders. That's a lot. It would seem that no one would rule like Peter the Great did. And over the course of 37 years, the throne, so for, in 37... Peter the Great, after he named himself... Yes, he named himself that. And I'm wondering if that St. Petersburg, if he named it after Peter from the Bible or himself. Saint in himself made it. I'm pretty sure it was after himself, but I can't remember if, if he named it that or if it was named that later. All right, let's focus, please. So over these, over 37 years... The throne went from Peter's widow to his grandsons to his nieces and nephew until finally it went to his daughter, Elizaveta, and she was 32 when she took the crown. So that's interesting that it didn't go to his daughter first. Before it got to his daughter, Elizaveta, it went to his grandson, it went to his widow, which is okay, it went to his wife, then his grandsons, then his nieces and nephews, then finally his daughter. All right, like those before her, Elizaveta could not live up to her father's reputation. She was more interested in her wardrobe, meaning what she was wearing, her social activities. She owned 15,000 dresses and 2,500 pairs of shoes. But she had the foresight to set up her nephew, who would be the next king with a promising young German princess. The princess was Sophia, and she grew up to be Catherine the Great. At Elizaveta's request, 15-year-old Sophia was invited to Russia in 1744. She was interviewing to marry uh, Elizaveta's 16-year-old nephew. So she went for an interview for marriage. It's a little interesting. <laughs> Have you come for the interview for wife? Um, Sophia passed the interview with flying colors. 
She then moved to Russia. She was given three tutors, one to teach her Russian dance, one to teach her about the Orthodox Church, and one to teach her Russian. She studied the Russian language with passion. She embraced everything Russian and joined the church. It was then that she was christened, christened Catherine. In 1745, Catherine married Elizabeth's nephew as planned. So how old was she? His name was Peter, a name given to him by Elizabeth in honor of her father. Okay, so Peter at this time was 17. He was the Grand Duke, and Catherine was 16, too young to be married. She was beautiful with black hair, fair skin, and long black eyelashes. Now, it would be nice if I could write that the newlyweds lived happily ever after, but that was not the case. The young couple, arranged in marriage, would never appear to be in love or even somewhat compatible, meaning they didn't appear to like they got along. Peter was very immature compared to Catherine. Well, he's 17, 17 year old boys. He's still a boy and she's still a girl. I will say that oftentimes girls are a little bit more mature than boys before boys are. Um, that's not always the case, but here it appears to be so. But both of them still had a lot of growing up to do. And especially if Peter grew up in a palace, a lot of times it's hard to be mature when uh, you grow up in that type of environment. Um, like you're the most loved person in the world, in the city. Now I can't say that for sure because I don't know what his palace life was like, but if he was spoiled and kind of doted on, you know, without any type of responsibility. Um, but I, can, I can't say that for sure. Okay, so it, but it says he played with his toy soldiers. This is at 17. He was behind in his education. He drank way too much alcohol, so that's definitely affecting his brain. Um, and as a distraction from Peter, Catherine poured herself into studying the classics. She loved Plato, Plutarch, and Voltaire. Plato? Not Plato, like the, but Plato, the, the writer. P-L-A-T-O, not P-L-A-Y-D-O-H. Catherine was not fulfilled. She made the poor choice of breaking her wedding vows to seek the attention and company of other men. And Peter was also guilty of practicing infidelity. So they were basically having affairs with other people. Peter was loving other women like wives. She was loving other men like husbands, even though they were married to each other. So the royal couple was a mess. That's what Miss Hobar says. Catherine would later write that her first years of marriage were miserable. She lived at one end of the palace, and Peter lived at the other. When Eliza Veda died in 1761, Peter became the king, or the czar, of Russia. His new title was Peter III. Though not in love, Peter III and Catherine moved to the Winter Palace in St. Petersburg to be the new king and queen of Russia. Now pay close attention to this interesting thread. Remember Frederick the Great of Prussia. This is so confusing. Frederick the Great of Prussia. Do you remember how he finally won the Seven Years' War? He gained momentum to win the war when the ruler of Russia, who was not on his side, died, and one of his friends took the throne in Russia. Well, the Russian ruler who was not on his side was Elizaveta, but his friend was Peter III, this her nephew and Catherine's husband. He was the one who was enamored with Frederick the Great of Prussia and everything Prussian. Peter III idolized Frederick, and he wore a ring on his finger that had Frederick's tiny portrait. That's a little bit hilarious. He had a... Get that thing, please. He had a little ring that had Frederick's picture on it. That's a bit hilarious. And in the Seven Years' War, Peter III moved Russia to Frederick's side. They must be really good buddies. And it was pivotal to Frederick's winning the war. The only bad thing. All right, we're going to stop there. We're going to be on. We're going to stop there. We're going to be on page 44. Um, we stopped with Peter III switching Russia to Frederick's side so that Frederick would win the war.
All right, that's it for now.